So when's the last time you heard God calling you? Wednesday. Thank you, Henry. Wednesday. Seriously, though, has anybody here ever sensed or heard or felt God calling you to something new? Anybody willing to tell a short little story about it? Yes, Denise? Okay. It wasn't this church, it was another church. Well, forget it. Great. That's great. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else? When have you heard God calling you or felt God calling you? Um, when Elizabeth first came to me, she was supposed to be with me just for 10 days. By day four, I knew God told me this child has to stay with me and we had a path with God. Wonderful. So from foster care to adoption to a life together. Beautiful. Anybody else? Bill. Well, this is the story. When I came here to the director of life ministry, that's what I was following me because I didn't listen to her. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we can see just from those three brief stories how differently um, God calls us in, in so many different ways. If the, Samuel, who was a child, who was living in the temple studying under the highest high priest, Samuel was preparing to be a priest, and he's, he's taking a nap one day, apparently, and he hears, Samuel, Samuel, and he thinks it's Eli, so he gets up and goes to Eli, here I am, you called me. Well, of course, Eli sends him back to bed. That wasn't me. And after multiple times of God saying, Samuel, Samuel, Samuel finally gets it. Oh, it's the Lord speaking to me. Now, Samuel was called by God at a very young age to be a prophet. And prophets are kind of bad news, good news people, because what they do is they speak God's word to God's people. But it always starts with the bad news. You are in the mess you find yourselves in because you've turned away from God. And if you continue on this path, not only will you continue to live in misery, but it's going to get a whole lot worse. But, there's always a but in a prophecy, but if you return to the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, God will give you the most abundant, beautiful life you can possibly imagine. The choice is yours. Not much fun to be a prophet because oftentimes they didn't get past the bad news to give the good news. I don't know if any of us here feel as if we're called to be prophets, but we are each and every one of us called. You are called by God. Now, sometimes when, when we are aware of God calling us to something new or to go deeper into something we're already doing or, or further on a path that we're already taking, sometimes we, we actually might hear a voice of God calling us in the night. The night is that quiet, dark time when we are much more open to hearing God's voice. 
Sometimes hearing God calling is more of an internal, like a, like a pull. We feel as if we're being pulled in a new direction. And as we dare to open ourselves up to that and, and, and offer ourselves to God, God strengthens us and, and gives us an even stronger sense of, of who we were created to be and how God is going to lead us into that identity more fully. Sometimes call comes through other people, like, like in Bill's story and, and Denise's story. Sometimes God uses other people to be agents of his call to us, where someone might say to us, you know, I see these gifts in you. Have you ever thought about? And we need to listen when that happens because it might be God's way of of inviting us into newness and, and a brand new adventure, sharing God's love in the world. We often speak of, of our call beginning in the water of baptism, that it's in that right, that moment, when an individual, whether it's a child or an older person, that in that moment, God publicly proclaims God's love for that person, just like God did when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan and came up out of that water soaking wet, and the, the heavens parted, and a, a dove ascended, descended, and the whole world heard God's voice saying, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. And Jesus launches his ministry of love in the world. In so many ways, our call to becoming the people God created us to be truly does begin with baptism where water is poured and anointing is done and prayers are said and a child is no longer subjected to the power of sin in his or her life but is reborn a new creation. But I would dare to suggest that our call starts long before baptism. In our call to worship today, which is part of Psalm 139, the author of this psalm is speaking to God about his or her own creation. And this person says, you knit me together in my mother's womb. What a beautiful image of God knitting us together, like a little old woman with a shawl knitting us together in our mother's womb. God dreamed you before you were born. And God had a reason for you being here, a purpose for your life, a purpose that God's call leads us to discovering. And when we discover and live into and out of our God-given purpose, that is when we find our deepest joy and meaning in everything we do each and every day. So some of us are called to be pastors, and, and pastors come into congregations because they are called, and sometimes pastors leave those communities of faith. But God sustains, and God sends a new pastor, just the right leader, to be the next person to lead that congregation into God's future. Some of us are called to be teachers or, or musicians or technicians or business people. But here's, here's the thing. We as Lutherans talk about call using the word vocation, not vacation. There's no such thing as a vacation in, in God's world, but vocation. And when we speak about vocation, what we're talking about is this way of thinking about our lives where we accept the fact that we are called by God. And that when we live our lives as a way of glorifying God in everything we do, in every moment, of our lives, with every breath we take, with every relationship that we have, when that's how we live our lives, that it's 
all to the glory of God, suddenly everything matters. Martin Luther talked about vocation as an incredibly, incredibly important way of, of looking at how God calls us into this world as ordinary people, ordinary people. But that if we can, can live our lives through the lens of loving God by loving our neighbor in everything we do, suddenly we can actually start seeing God at work in those, in those large and small moments of our lives that seem insignificant, but are actually infused with the love and power of God's grace. And when we live our lives through the lens of wanting to please and serve God in everything we do, suddenly those, those daily tasks that maybe aren't so appealing take on a new meaning, a new depth. Now, Luther was a pretty earthy guy, and he lived in a pretty earthy time where he ministered among peasants in Europe. And one of the examples Luther used in his writing about vocation was this. He said, everyone is called in everything we do. And if you are the one in your village whose job it is to clean the village outhouse, do it to the glory of God. Yuck. But how might that task be completely changed for someone who is expected to do it? If by doing that nasty job, they recognize that they are doing it to keep their community safe. If they're doing that particular job to the glory of God because that is what God calls that person to do in that moment in time. Kind of changes everything, doesn't it? it? Changes everything. So whether we're a customer service rep talking to really annoying customers on the phone, or whether we are a teacher struggling so hard to help children who have lived through a pandemic and have struggled mightily and continue to struggle, to find their place? If we're a business person whose, whose job it is to make money for our company, oh, there are so many ways we can approach that kind of work in ways that glorify God and have integrity behind them. And maybe we're blessed enough to be someone who is no longer getting up and going to work every day but we are still called in our daily lives, in our daily relationships, in everything we do each and every day. Our problem is, like Bill said, we don't always listen. We just don't listen. We're so busy listening to everything else and everybody else and all these voices that are constantly coming at us through all kinds of media and just the noise of this world. Am I right? We're so busy focusing on all, all that noise, we miss the voice of God, which sometimes comes to us as a tiny whisper and sometimes as a two by four when God really needs to get our attention. And sometimes God calls to us in the dark of night. And sometimes God calls to us through other people. And sometimes God calls to us through an internal push and pull that we discern is actually God speaking to us and inviting us to step out of our comfortable lives, to stop sleepwalking through life and start to live, to really live as a child of God, precious in his sight, beloved, saved, 
by God's grace, through our relationship with Jesus Christ, freed from any kind of fear in order to be God's hands and feet and voice of love in this world that is so, so desperate for a piece of good news and truth that is really true. So what will you say the next time you sense that God is calling you? What will you do the next time God puts someone in your path and you recognize there's something going on here? I can feel it. Will you listen to God? Will you let God guide you through that moment in time or into a new path in your life? Will you block God from all of your social media so you can't hear that voice anymore? Or will you, like Samuel, not being sure what God is calling you to do or where God might be leading you, but trusting God with your whole heart and soul and mind and strength, will you say, Here I am, Lord. Here I am. Send me. Thanks be to God. Amen.